So what happened to God of War when it came back in 2018? Well, Dad would be very happy, because now you really can just pick easy and enjoy the locations and story. Platforming oh, no. was removed, which means that hazard-based puzzles and coordination-based puzzles were also removed. What about progress I, blocking so, puzzles? So again, I, I do want to emphasize, you fundamentally still have to navigate the world. No matter how much you describe yeah. it as like, mm. well, it's really linear, so it's easy to know exactly where to go. I'm talking like an even more fundamental base, like you just know how to get from like point A to point B. That's something that can't be removed no matter what. The, like, I don't know what it means for a video game to, to be a video game and for it to, like, for it to remove any possibility that you can't fail. But like, I don't a, even know what that looks like. It's also a wrong. where it's impossible to fail. I mean, a, I'm, I'm not even against easy modes wait, doing that. You have to like, talk if, to if it's, about that, I'm afraid. <gasps> uh, John! <laughs> <laughs> there are coordination based yeah. puzzles in this game there's a lot of them i don't know why he's implied that there aren't uh not i guess he said mm -hmm. for platforming but like we can't ignore the uh you know you have to like freeze every time you have to throw wheels. your axe yeah yeah or, mm -hmm. or like rooms where you have to uh god english is so shit like like spin the big wood thing and and then you have to freeze it so that you can go underneath a big ceiling like a bunch of spikes are gonna smash down but then when you get in bunch of enemies come in so you have to fight them with your fists because if you pull thing. back your leviathan axe then it's gonna drop the ceiling on you right that's like a combination of puzzle and combat but then yeah. you have the basic puzzles like all the times you have to get the um i want to say the what what are the chests that have the apple of like they, they give you health bonuses but you have to get them by the, oh when you, you have to find the, the little statues yeah you have to not uh, only find them but hit them all within a certain amount of time which requires yep. accuracy some of them up pretty mm -hmm. fucking tight dexterity. as well like these yeah, things like, are still the in the Riddler game puzzles that have got away. yeah and Mahler, hmm? Mahler, remember that we watched in our god of war uh ragnarok oh we, we watched our our dear friend <laughs> our, our dear dear friend our very intelligent <laughs> dear friend synthetic man try his hardest <laughs> at some of those very simple puzzles that are present god in easy him. mode by the way <laughs> god bless him he eventually got it but watching him struggle through those was is very amusing yes see because someone just said those chess puzzles are easy it's like yeah well some game of gods have trouble <laughs> on them so even if atreus or freya say this is what you need to do you still got to do it you, you know still gotta do it. Like, easy, <laughs> oh actually you actually still remember gotta do it. There's actually one puzzle in, I think it was in Ragnarok. Yeah, it was Ragnarok, where you have to freeze a thing. And I, d I didn't even know that was a thing I was allowed to do. I don't know if you remember which one I mean, mutually. It's when you have to freeze a certain place so it stops the water or something. I think, I think so, you got yeah. stuck in yeah, 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 yeah. a in... couple of minutes as well. It's Vodelfheim, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And like the character's like, look up there. It's like, where? There's nothing. It's like, oh, I can freeze <laughs> this like wherever I want. Okay, that's good to know. Uh, a lot of people so like, keep highlighting like the puzzles are easy. Arguably, the fucking platforming puzzles in God of War One are easy. They're just frustrating because one mistake means you start yeah. from the beginning again. Yeah. In concept, they're yeah, easy, but find. I know finding a thing and hitting it with a with another thing is easy, but you still have to find them. And in the end, if you get stuck by falling down a thing or get stuck by running around and finding a thing. Is it that much of a difference and and difficulty in the end? Well, and I mean, then it, probably not, right? Once you deal with all of that being you. an inaccurate statement on the actual state of the game, you then get to the question of why is this a problem? Right. Yeah. I would I say that there are. You go ahead. You go ahead. The progress blocking aspect of the not puzzle. Not you, is... CJ, who was talking. <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> oh, no, no, no. All I, I was basically just agreeing with Mauler. I wonder what his point actually is here. Like, is is it a bad thing that the platforming has been removed? If the intention of the devs was to create a different kind of game experience? Well, in many games, fucking get that platforming out of this fucking game. <laughs> Fuck you for so putting platforming so in this so game. Yeah. Look, I'm just I... saying some games have platforming in them. No, From I'm not going to say software. many games. Many <laughs> games software. have platforming segments in them, and I want them to die and go away and no one like them. There Fuck is off. an argument <laughs> to be made about whether it's a good idea to invest any amount of development time into something that could be considered like a tertiary or secondary aspect that doesn't or uh, rather, rather than rather than focusing all and, and then making something that's kind of subpar 
Because I imagine you, I imagine you can't compare the God of War platforming to a platforming video game. No, you know, like a like a full no. fledged one. No, but it might yeah. be a better idea to invest all of that time into the core of whatever experience it is that you're creating. In this case, an action game. Oh, and, and yeah. Chad, I don't, I don't, I don't hate platforms. It's just a lot of the times, platforming. Platforms are yeah. great. I like platforms, but, but like platforming, I often hate because it's just. Like Fringy was just saying, it's a secondary or tertiary or almost like filler element that's mm -hmm. added to a game. Yeah, we'll toss and once it you in. get to the platforming segment, you're like, ugh, gotta do the fucking this busy chore that I hate so that I can get Genuinely, back to the actual it, game. It can it's come across as though that the developers are like, cherries. we invented jump yeah. and we invented gaps. We did it. There we go. <laughs> that's <laughs> Prime was a really good example of first person platforming done well for what I can remember being the first time. Uh, that's because the platforming in Metroid Prime is way more integrated as like mm -hmm. an important, rather than just, oh, this is the platforming section. Platforming yeah. is just a part of that game. It's inherent it's to like, gameplay. Uh, yeah, it's like playing yeah. like the old Tomb Raiders, you know? It's like platforming is integral to the, you, you do platforming before you do combat in Tomb Raider 2, for instance. That's right. It's uh, it's just something that is right from the beginning. You know, this is a this is a platforming slash puzzle game that has combat in it. So, yeah, uh, you're never not doing platforming in Metroid. <laughs> platforming in a non-platforming game is filler. Then it's like it can be. Depends on how they. It can be. Yeah, it can be. It's, yeah, it can be. it's it not can necessarily. Be. Again, yeah. I don't know if I would. If you ask me what is Metroid Prime, I would describe it as many things before a platforming game, but the platforming Probably. isn't filler. Mm -hmm. It's integrated into the core framework of the Metroidvania, you know, adventure um, game that it is. Yeah, well, uh, I, I was okay. thinking more of Super Metroid, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, Super yeah, Metroid. I forgot we were yeah, talking about Metro uh, Metroid Prime. Yeah. Super Metroid is, well, I mean, yeah, Super Metroid's got a shit ton of platforming in it. Yes. yes. Metroid Prime, though, the way it worked so much better is because they had Samus sort of tilt down as you were in the air so you could see where you were going to land. It's really well, yeah, simple, but it made a huge difference. Generally, in first person shooters is awful. <laughs> generally, yep. it's really All annoying. Times, yeah. Um, and I'd also like to say that, because uh, I feel like he might be heading in this direction, he's kind of hinted at it, but I don't want to necessarily create a very, very um, uh, a conspicuous and. A bold line between puzzle and combat, because mm. a lot of combat systems exist that have that, that very much have puzzly elements yep. to them in or terms of the amount of uh, in terms of the amount of things that you could do at any given point, knowing what you're working towards doing, the tools you have at your disposal, and well, uh, even all, down all sorts to of something things. as simple as this weapon works better on the enemy that is this color. You know, yes. like if it, if it's if it's red, then you gotta use the blue one. Red. Or if it's blue, you gotta use the red one. You know, like yeah, even that. That is a kind of uh, man. I know saying it's like a puzzle sounds so stupid. Well, you're, you're like, weird. Just the fundamentals. Like, oh, oh. Com yeah, combat is often like an action puzzle in a lot of ways, where you have to do this against that. And that against I mean, what is the best way to win? You know, God of War definitely do has that level of like, you know, it's a fire enemy, get your ice axe. Oh no, an ice enemy, get yeah. your fire blades. <laughs> like, yeah, simple. But you know, it also has it get complicated with the spear and then the interactions between each of them and the combos between supercharging any of them, right? And then you know, you take a fiery enemy and hit them with ice, it'll like freeze burn or whatever the fuck the bonus is called, and it's mm. like, ah, oh, sweet. All these different. I mean, it those are all aspects of the combat's puzzles in a way. That lack of that lack of a sandbox was the reason I think Final Fantasy 16 has bad combat because it's you just do damage. It doesn't matter what it, you can. You oh, guys know the fire. Final Fantasy guy. 16 has bad combat. Oh yeah, God. well, I think it's I think That's it's very take. simplistic and doesn't really have any depth to it. Oh my God! Wow, spicy. Really? That, you, that you it don't is. Think so? I, it is a problem. Uh, I, in a lot I of think games. that it is not nearly as complex as a lot of other, you know, action games. Um, I enjoyed it, but yeah, you know I what the, like, you know what I think the problem is with that. Oh, I, I enjoyed it too. I didn't say it was like terrible and like not fun to play, but I just think that they, it, it was, was really sim. No, I said it was really simplistically designed. Okay, <laughs> oh, I, think was, okay. I think it was poorly designed. Okay, well, I guess I'll clarify my oh, point. And the reason I think designed. that is because. Well, because, look, there wasn't any need to have elemental damage correspond to the type of enemy that you're fighting. There were no status anomalies at all. There was no integration of a party in any way. Like, it was it was essentially a one-man show Final Fantasy game, which I think Final Fantasy game combat tends to be better when you've got an interesting party to combine your skills with in creative ways. And, yeah, I don't it's, know. It's um, just... 
that that phenomenon sort of becomes an issue in a lot of games. We see it in many, many RPGs that aren't really super well designed, where there's no point in doing anything except for damage. Killing the enemy is the is the ultimate goal, and there's no reason why why should I drain their magic? Why should I drain their stamina? Why should I slow them? Mm. Why should I do anything else when I could just do as much damage as possible and kill them? And doing damage is always the correct answer. It's well, I suppose an interesting question when it comes to that is if you were to talk about combat that is well designed or poorly designed, how much of the conversation relates to well, is there one strategy that will work all the time, basically in yeah. all cases that I can uh, use every time? Or does the I game so. force me to change? I'm inclined to lean in that direction. I've talked about it before, but yeah. as far as I'm concerned, one of the big problems with um the combat in the Insomniac Spider-Man games is it's very easy to stay in the air where you are fundamentally yeah. less vulnerable to enemies because there are only think... a few enemies that can attack you in the air when all enemies can attack you on the ground. And pretty much every single one of your attacks keeps you in the air if you're already Yeah, you there. can always hold, you hold triangle, yank the enemy up into the air, web them up, sling them into the ground, hold triangle to yank the next enemy up, web them up, throw them into the ground. You can do that, and it's going to suck. It's not going to be fun at all, mm. but you can do that, and then just basically, like, win every single encounter. And, and if that's, you know, I don't know that it's reflective of good design when one strategy is going to work all the time in all cases. Yeah, the I thing is how much that's due to how many I... options you have, as in like, when you're presented with all these different combat things, and then only one of them works well, versus you only have one, and the one works well, makes you like focus on maybe the game, like the level design, or the enemy variety, if you only have one form of attacking things, versus I think, the game. I think in the game you have, you have several. You have several different types of combat, you have several types of what are called, uh, are they icons in that game, or am I thinking of the 14 one? Anyways, there's summons, basically, that give you different attacks and abilities, including in your standard weapons, how fast you move, everything like that. The thing is, you kind of just pick your three favorite ones, or maybe it was four, I don't know, might have been four, but, and then you can, you can swap to them at any time, and it doesn't really matter which one you're using at which time. It's just what ones you find the most comfortable to use. So it's almost like they're um, different weapons as opposed to things that tools in your tool set that you need to constantly be rather, aware of and refer to. Something that I, I think that you can... Theo made a video talking about the, the score system, the style meter in, in Devil May Cry. Yeah. Seriously, like one of the easiest ways to make your game instantly better is to just put in a style meter, some yeah. kind of scoring system that rewards you for mixing up yeah, what yeah. you do. And then, you know, like stuff like that is a huge incentive to not just rely on the same strategy. Cause you want to see, you know, it's if you're playing the game and then you start it to C drop from like B to C to D, you're like, oh fuck, that's lame. Um, <laughs> like I, I want to get, you know, I want to get like triple S rank. Um, that like providing incentives to play uh differently rather than relying on one strategy over and over and over yeah. again is a really easy way to encourage people to essentially have more the, fun with your game. You know, melee kills get you ammo and uh, mm -hmm. whatever have you, like different Flame things to kills force you into get your armor. Positions. Yeah, it's uh, funny yep. you mentioned this style system, Fringy, because I, I remember having a moment like this with Devil May Cry Five. Yeah. When you're playing specifically as V, like this magical spell guy, yeah, yeah. he like summons enemies. If you just move around and alternate between pressing triangle, square, and, and circle, yeah. and just do that over and over again, and just run everywhere, you won't take damage, you'll eliminate all the enemies, and you'll get like the max skill rating, or at least a really high one, you know? Yeah, so it's just like, wow, it's really like I broke this game, I can't believe this. Sorry, go ahead. Mm. I was just saying the V combat's really interesting. You're right. Right, yeah. Well, it, I, it, it's a shame. It can be reduced to just that simple button combination. Um, Not only can you clear all the enemies out, but you're also rewarded with a high style uh, grade. Well, what I, what I would argue there, at least for v, the way V styles ratings are done, is that's the moment where you're not even interacting with combat except for the executions as V, that you understand how to properly use them, because essentially you're trying to be a puppeteer there. And yeah. it's, it's square is your panther and triangle is your... Oh, wait, maybe it's the other way around. Sorry. Triangle's yeah. the panther, square's the raven, and then circle is your oh. big monster dude, right? Arr. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah. No, 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 wait. That's your that's your execution. Sorry. I might have switched up the controls. You had the well, right it, stick to bring the monster. It is an important distinction cuz he is meant to be a character who's sort of frail, non-combative and yeah. he just like summons things that actually do the fighting for him. So, yeah. 
you, you, the same th strategy wouldn't apply to Dante or uh, the other one. I can't remember. Nero. Hey, I think Nero, the, yeah. Nero's got the most kind of balanced style, the easier one to learn, whereas Dante, you've got the most flexibility. And um, so getting style ratings high with Dante is, I think, the most satisfying. But Theo made a yeah, great definitely. video on this, everybody. On, oh. Yeah, on mm -hmm. Theo's channel. Also, I want to highlight... Someone in chat said, uh, Mayo is a fan of classic survival horror. You guys are not, so shut up. You don't know shit about survival horror. I just want to say... Damn, true. Anybody <laughs> who is a fan of me and watches people live cover my videos, please don't be this cringe. Like, just, just... <laughs> like, ask them interesting questions. Don't be like, you don't know nothing about Star War. Mueller does. Yeah. <laughs> but also, this is the video called How God of War Ruined Resident Evil Village. Also, we love Sorry. survival horror. Yeah, we do. Um, <laughs> I wasn't even going to so, bring that up. I don't know what to tell you, man. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about, man. Like, Resident Evil 4 is one of, like, my super formative video games. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I don't, I, it's, it's bizarre. You yeah, but know, that's not that's that's survival <laughs> horror rags. That ain't classic. Oh, it's, the, it's only, horror. like, what, 2004? It's only 20 it's years classic. old. Yeah, it's yeah. only 20 <laughs> years ago. It's not the real classics. Damn. Okay, but don't, don't say classic rock if it ain't fucking Beethoven, okay? <laughs> Oh my god. ...that hazard-based puzzles and coordination-based puzzles were also removed. Climbing... Yeah, that's Substitute not the case. Coordination... Substitute it's not the case, and it's not... We already talked about it. Yeah. Yeah. ...was changed to be automatic, oh, okay. so there's no more combat or... Oh boy, well, wait, I love those automatic. parts. You gotta... Those <laughs> are automatic! All you do is fucking spam square! Yeah. Well, neither of them were automatic, technically. They aren't. You gotta move. I just it, the game won't do it for you. you know? I don't like like this this the smell here. Uh like I don't I don't <laughs> it's the thing uh, as someone who's played through it so many times, like I don't fucking like it when I'm climbing up these mountains and they go, Oh, there's here comes bad guys. Like, great, square, 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 yeah. square, square. Cool, I can move again. Yeah. How does that make it better? Now, if someone you said, know, like, yeah, but it's more boring to just travel, I was like, is it? I don't know. This feels like busy work I don't work know, man. Me. Yeah, Hazard. I've played plenty of games where I just walk around and look at things, and it's been like, oh, oh, wow, look at that. Interesting. Well, well I guess what this, what's there? over there? Is that the impression I get with stuff like this is that ultimately what's happening in both games is the same, but one of them said, all right, throw enemies at them while they're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> is that necessarily a good thing? I don't know. If you can climb and enemies also can climb and you can take damage while climbing, I'm glad there's at least something you can do to like get rid of them. But it is annoying just like mashing square until they go away and then you just keep climbing. Mm -hmm. It's a bit or sorry. jumping just at the well, right time. I guess, I guess what's interesting is what's the difference between that and uh, like, I don't know, when you're climbing in Uncharted and then something goes wrong and a cinematic plays of Nate like falling down for ages. One of them is, well, yeah. you got to press the square button at least. Mm, <laughs> but at the same right. time, they're both delays in climbing, aren't they? Well, in many <laughs> cases, the words action-based puzzle can just be substituted for combat. They really can. Your health bar refills to 100% when you die in a new area, your magic recharges automatically, and there's no XP. By the way, magic recharging automatically is a shit ton of games to where that's basically yeah. the standard. Well, yeah. magic yeah. regeneration Surely. rates is in mana. That's that's a super standard thing. Recharging mana based on collectibles or over time is it's just down to the, how the game was designed. Yep, one hundred percent. Yeah, you have and to take it. In, you have to take it within the totality of the design. You know how how does uh how does it recharging support whatever systems? or contradict whatever systems are present in this game compared to the old ones. Yeah, well, sometimes you want to maintain a gameplay flow, and, you know, you don't want it to be like Zelda, where you're running around for a fucking mana pot, you know? Just like, oh, which yeah. one of these bushes <laughs> has a thing, just so I can do this spell, for Christ's sake, you know? XP gain difference between mashing like an idiot and performing a long, flashy combo and having good defense. There's nothing demanded of you in God of War Whoa. apart from surviving singular combat rooms and the patience. Wait, nothing that's what you do in the other God of Wars. So I that's something because, to survive. Well, because you have to fight people while climbing walls. Apparently, the original God of Wars had way more than the new what? ones do. Yeah, but I mean, if it's about just surviving a, a combat and get, go ahead, that's all you do in God of War, basically. You go into the arena, beat all the guys up, hope you yeah, don't take too much damage. Also, I would go further, Mel. It's the part oh. that everyone likes. You're getting about the underworld. Yeah. 
Is this a major complaint though that you don't get more XP for creative combat? Uh, no, I think I think the complaint is that broadly that it, it, that now it's just combat rather than combat plus puzzles plus uh, platforming, but there's still puzzles. There still is game. puzzles, yeah. I mean, yeah. Well, but the pu the puzzles we puzzles referenced are ones well. that you can actually skip in God of War 2018. But oh, if, can you? Well, you know stuff like the chests, anyway. Um, you know, oh, the, yeah, the ones yeah. in, like, Svartalfheim you can't skip in, in Ragnarok. I'm trying to... I haven't played 2018 in a bit of time now. Um, um, well, there's plenty of time in 2018 where you're having to push a cart to a place that you can then jump on it and then get to the other side of an area. Right. And why? what is that if not platforming? You just don't have a jump button. The thing is, it depends on, you know, you can describe mm -hmm. any game very reductively. Um, mm -hmm. You could just say, well, all first-person shooters, you're just centering the screen on the thing you want to kill. Yeah. Um, you can do that, but like then you lose basically all of the elements that you just, that's not a very meaningful observation to make. Yeah, I, I could hand him, I could say, here, Apex Legends, all you have to do is be the last squad alive, see, it's simple, no, right? You, and you'll get your ass like, kicked. All you do in, in the old God of War is you press the square button. Like, you could do that, <laughs> but that's not yeah. fair. That's just not fair to uh, to those games. Um, there was that combined with, well, yeah, because the broad point just seems to be that, uh, they made it easier. Um, everything is, well, is way well, easier on the maybe, easiest difficulty than the easiest difficulty on the previous games. I, it seems I think like a really odd way to compare more, games is which, which easy think, mode is easiest. I think he's gone further than that. <laughs> it's more so that they've removed the things that couldn't be affected by a difficulty slider. But they could. They could, but they weren't. Yeah, so that that's a whole but conversation it, 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 in and of itself, right? The the idea that if God of War had puzzles in it in twenty eighteen that were very difficult and they wouldn't have changed for lower difficulties isn't even true. But it doesn't have those puzzles anyway. You know what I mean? Like the box puzzle where it's going to get destroyed if you don't, you know, avoid the archers in God of War one. Not a puzzle I think is particularly good, by the way. But the if it were mm -hmm. present in twenty eighteen, they may have made it easier on easy. And that wouldn't be wrong. <laughs> that would be fine. Wait. Well, even that sequence not, is easier if you don't die as quickly because you don't have to worry as much about getting hit by the arrows yourself. Like I said, I, I don't have any issue with um, puzzles being made easier along with combat because, as Rags was pointing out, I think a couple of us, in a sense, combat is a puzzle. And so yep. when you lower combat difficulty, you're lowering the chances for you to fail the puzzle being this time. Like, oh, look, he's doing a big yellow charge-up move. You, you can't stand right in front of him. Got to move back. But then once he does that, he's got an opening on his back. Got to go behind. You got to make sure you charge your big blue laser. Just stuff, you know, all the basic understanding of systems and then taking advantage of your time slots to do the things. Well, it's the soft implication that the puzzles in the game are less worthy of being affected by difficulty than the combat is. But the puzzles are a part of the game, right, devs? You made it a part of the game. You built all this, you made assets, you programmed it and coded it. It's part of the game. Why are you ignoring this and when I change the difficulty, how come these parts aren't affected? What is that telling me? Hmm. Well, is and it why just are we filler is or what? Why are we okay with making the combat a breeze, but we're not okay with them not having puzzles that are always hard? Do you understand what I'm saying? He's saying like yeah, you have Resident Evil's combat gets way easier, but at least they still had the puzzles. And it's like, are we saying that it would be better on easy if the combat weren't easier as well? Like, what is the point of difficulty, if, if not that? I don't get, like, why... Using easy mode as a benchmark is strange, anyways. Well, he's trying to use it, it to is. explain a philosophy, which is that they've lost the interest in making things harder, harder. in the in-between portions of, like, the main of the game yeah when instead it seems like they just focused all their time and attention on not just the story and the characters and everything but also in the combat itself i'd much rather play a game that was super focused on delivering a combat experience instead of one that had mm. subpar segments in between them where i could get annoyed at the platforming they threw in I'm going to tie this into Resident Evil Village, by the way. I just wanted to remind everybody. Oh, man, yeah, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the same thing that, like, Resident Evil used to have. I mean, it's kind of gone over it, right? It's more prevalent with Resident Evil because there used to be a lot more item management and challenge in relation to backtracking, mm. this, that, and the other. It'll, it'll be the yeah. broad observation that modern game design philosophy has ruined everything. I presume that's the... Yeah, but kind of like the there's loads of holes in. in this already in terms of shoulds. Mm-hmm.
between mashing like an idiot and performing a long flashy combo and having good defense. There's nothing demanded of you in God of War apart from surviving singular combat rooms and the patience needed to deal with Atreus screaming at you every seven seconds. Whatever. With nothing left in the game. I mean, this is the thing. There the way are you, progress you, blocking puzzles, though. Like, that's the thing. It's, but why couldn't someone solve the sell puzzles? God of War 1 as an awesome action game that is plagued with nonsense, boring ass puzzles that take you nowhere and make you think for about one second? Mostly delaying you. Yeah, the whole point of God of War is killing things, and this isn't killing things, so that's pretty lame. Yeah, why the fuck am I, I the mean, God of War, trying to play chess with a fucking did, little yeah. frog or something? Why am I like, running <laughs> around on this this little beam that's spinning? This yeah. ain't this ain't what I was promised. Yeah, and that it's it's Either someone could just say it's incongruent with the fucking design of the game. The philosophy is silly. They're just trying to delay us. Where you I mean, go I know... with the canoe and when is also sort of up to you in this one, and that was never a thing in the original games. Also, I don't I mean, remember. Like for, Go we ahead. talked about Resident Evil Four, you know, a bit, and like the puzzles in that are barely puzzles. They like the the game. I don't. I don't think the game would be worse if they just just didn't have them. They're so simplistic. They're Come so yeah. easy. Yeah, it's like and a small amount of you flavor. Just, you're just like, oh look, I'm doing this. Yeah, thing. it's just a yeah. It's basically just a little bit of flavor, a very tiny moment, you know, momentary pause before you get back to sort of playing the game, and then your next playthrough. I mean, there are puzzles that I just know muscle memory. Whether it's, you know, Batoris Mendez's door, whether it's the seven sacrifices in the castle. It's just like, I, I know all these puzzles, I just, I, they're not even puzzles, I just boop, boop, up, yep, it's done. One, two, three is a combination, and then boom, door opens. I know what you mean, yeah, it's like, why even bother at that point? If there's like three spaces, and two of them are occupied by skulls, and there's one empty one, and then there's a skull back there. Oh yeah, if I just pick that up and put the skull there, well, the door will open. Like, why even bother? Like, it's that's just what I mean. so the, 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 the wall climbing stuff, he's like, in this game you just wall climb, but in this game you wall climb, and then enemies come at you, and you go, oh, you gotta kill them, and you go, oh, fuck. and he's like, why are you, it's boring. Like, what is this? It's yeah. just so simple. There's no combat to it beyond, you can press triangle, yeah. I think, if you want to, Square is the quick, broad sweep, and then triangles like a heavy. You can just do either. You can also grab them. You can you can grab them. Oh yeah, them, yeah. You can press you can press any you one of those them. buttons, and it'll just do the kill and then move on. Yeah. Which is precisely what he seems but to have issue with yeah. in terms of button mashing gameplay combat at its lowest difficulties. Which I still don't understand why that's okay when you switch difficulties, but puzzles being either reduced or gone isn't okay game to challenge players outside of combat, the game is now playable for any old Joe off the street. He can pick easy no, and... You, no, no way. No, that, this, can't, this wouldn't be somebody's first video game. I don't... Maybe maybe someone's this first would video be a, game, but like, definitely not on average. Well, yeah, I don't <laughs> think my dad could be God of War 2018 also, on his easiest difficulty. He'd be very confused by it. That, that yes. statement seems really elitist. Kind of. Yeah, I think I, I, think I agree. The idea of if so, someone can just pick up this game, set it to the easiest difficulty, which is literally called like story mode, and then they can beat it. It's like, yeah, that's why it's called this the story mode. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry that there aren't unnecessarily bizarrely difficult or out of place puzzles for them to have to solve oh, when yeah. they just want to experience the yeah, story and the characters. Because I don't think God of War was designed to be this super hard game that's supposed to be like an incredible, crazy challenge for everybody. Because there's a, a big thing of storytelling happening Well, he's already highlighted. You play, play God of War on easy, the original. It's pretty fucking easy. Yeah. It's like, yeah, but there's puzzles yeah. that get in your way. Yeah, like, puzzles, okay, right, they get in your way on hard. I suppose it, it, it's, like, it's that's not a good thing. This is like, uh, yeah, it's, it, it's two-pronged. One, is there something wrong with a game being designed such that it's easier to get into? Is that necessarily a bad thing? It's like, well, it's, you know, depends. Um, and also, this is not somebody's first video game compared to something like Mario. Well, like, would you make the instance. same I also... claim for Mario? That the new ones offer you an invincibility thing when you die enough times? Does that ruin Mario's design? Uh, maybe. maybe. Well, maybe he would, but but then but the, I guess he'd say that that's way less intrusive. Which I mean, and it's optional. Well, but there, so is this. It's I was going to say, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> if somebody wants to play these games and just experience the story and they and they just set it to easy like man go for it i'm glad I, you're experiencing the story my, and characters that's why it's like the, broader, I do. the broader observation is that the experience for everybody gets dragged down because it's designed at a, a fundamental level to be more accessible 
That would be that. I assume that's his main point. Maybe he'd have to show that, like he'd have to give mechanical examples because well, I think you would say I just did. I've shown you that this game has now stripped it to where only com combat is the only obstacle and combat is scalable. Whereas in the other games, there were obstacles that weren't scalable no matter what, like the platforming or the uh, inventory management or something like that. Well, obvious. Though that just creates a separate issue, which is inconsistency. If you have really hard platforming, then on easy mode, it's super out of place. If you have very easy platforming, then on hard difficulty, it's also super out of place. Well, and you weird. would say that it's the requisite level of difficulty, and that's good, and the new God of War game is, uh, has fucked it up. Do well, we if, know if that he doesn't he's... say that by the end, then he's... <laughs> I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty awful if he doesn't actually say that, if that's what he means. Because we're having to infer all of this. Does he know, though, that the scaling of the easy mode is the reason the platforming was taken out? Because that, that seems like a fairly large assumption. Well, oh, it might well, just be fucking boring and most people don't want it. And maybe the developers yeah. just don't consider that a vision that they have for God of War. Maybe him jumping around on platforms and climbing shit, they're just like, you know, let's just not, we don't have to have that. Well, I mean, something we that they just had focus on other and they things. reduced dramatically was QTEs. People didn't like them in the original games. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so there's yeah, a lot QTEs less of them now, thing. like hardly any. Shocking. I wonder I if he would make a. I wonder if he'd make the argument of you know being able to complete the QTEs are a, is the baseline prerequisite level of experience you need to have to beat the game. Well, the thing is, is um, there is fundamental baseline prerequisites outside of combat. I know it sounds silly, but like actually getting from one place to the other, regardless of how linear the game is, requires somebody to do something. They have to actually push the joystick, you know, the joystick in a certain direction to get there. It doesn't right. play itself, even well, down maybe to the those... most basic things of navigating the world or moving the camera. I can see a lot of people getting overwhelmed with the wealth of options you have as far as places to go in the newer God of War games, because the, the other ones are very linear. It's well, yeah, that's level, interesting the that you mentioned, is that there are just big open, like, hub areas. Yeah, like, it's like, okay, uh, where do I go now? Lots of... Or Vanaheim mid, uh, you know, hub area, or the Svartalheim uh, hub area with optional objectives that you can do that are, that are going to influence the experience you have because of, you know, getting more or less experience. And then, of course, just making choices about what kind of um, upgrades that you're going to get as well. Oh, That's yeah. not something... The game's not going to tell you system. which ones you're supposed to get because the game can't tell you which ones you would prefer. That's still a decision that you have to make, which potentially creates new challenges. Well, I can give you a, a, an example would be... It sort of applies to God of War, but I'll use an example from a game I've played. Was, uh, Gears 5 has two or three segments where the game is no longer linear, and it opens up, you have a little vehicle, and you have this area you can explore, and you could go around and do a bunch of side objectives, grab some upgrades, do a little extra story character stuff, and... If that was a, and, and I thought it was pretty neat, I liked it. it, it didn't seem super intrusive, I could skip it if I wanted to, um, it didn't overstay its welcome, so if it showed up in Gear 6, I'd be like, yeah, good. But if those segments were, like, boring and dull and super easy and pointless and just a waste of time, then I'd say, you know what, just don't put them in, maybe you don't have to put them in Gears 6, or you have to work, you know, better at making it actually good. The way that we engage with something in one game is probably going to affect our expectations for it in the next game. I got distracted by someone saying, Maul is being defensive. He acts in aggression rather than result. Dominance. <laughs> Dominance. <laughs> Dominance. <laughs> it's, 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 the point is, Maul, is that this is your... This, you are, you're no, you, you can't stop there. They compliment game. me. Hello. You just listened to a segment of the podcast Every Frame of Pause, or EFAP. Hosted by YouTubers Mauler, Rags, and Fringy, and joined by a cycling variety of guests across the internet, they critically analyze media with exhaustive detail while pausing at every single frame. Subscribe to the EFAP channel and catch new episodes on Saturdays, as well as catch their smaller videos reacting to the latest and not-so-greatest movies and TV shows throughout the week. You can also subscribe here to EFAP highlights for the latest shorts, clips, and supercuts also uploaded throughout the week. Links to all the relevant channels can be found in the description section below, as well as links to their communities on Reddit and Discord. Thanks for watching.